Hey guys, welcome to Maxiscope installation video. Let's take a quick rundown of what's required for you to be able to put it all together. So it's obviously a risk rama then everything that was in the box, foot support, rubber o-ring, actual body pieces, and the small hex key and a tiny screwdriver that were supplied. Stuff over here, it's not mandatory, can be sort of helpful. Um, so I have it here if you have a lens wrench or like small screwdrivers with long handles for better grip. Uh, sure, go ahead and use them. These two hex keys are required uh, to assemble the foot support and unfortunately I was not able to uh, supply them in a box because they were taking the weight of the parcel about 375 grams and um, there was a different um, tier of shipping costs. So these are just regular household hex keys. If you have like a set, they are definitely going to be in there. If you have like a multi-tool for your camera, you're definitely going to have these. So these are shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so let's get to step one, which is disassembly of your Iskarama. Okay, so we're going to start by disassembling the rear. There's this one retaining ring that we need to get rid of. For Iskaramas 36 and Sinigon, it's this tiny ring. It's copper uh, looking. It's inside there. This little tiny one. Not this uh, wide gray one, but this one. For the pre-36, it is slightly wider and it has a little uh, retention screw of its own. You gotta get rid of that screw first and then start unscrewing this one, which we are going to do right now as well. So I'm going to use the same flathead screwdriver, just insert it into a notch and start unscrewing this retainer. It's a tiny ring and it has tiny, tiny threads, so it can take you quite a while to get it out. It's going to be like, I don't know, 10 rotations or something around that. If you have lens wrench, you can use the lens, lens wrench for that as well. Okay, now that this washer is out, you can just take it out. Again, store it safely somewhere. And now this whole rear part can come off. Um, so don't rush with it because there is a spring inside. Uh, so you might want to hold it in place as you're doing that so it doesn't come off too quickly and the spring doesn't engage. So again, we are going to keep this, obviously. And inside there are these two buttons and this metal uh, spring over here. You can just get it out like so. The buttons go off as well. Don't lose them. Get the spring out slowly. Store it somewhere safely. Okay, the rear is off and what we get is something like this. There are these two notches left over here where the old alignment mechanism was and we are keeping this little piece of body in the middle uh, in order for our new body to work. Okay, off to the next step. Next step is going to be get rid of the nameplate over here. To do that, take the O-ring, insert it like so into the front and start spinning. Sometimes you might need to apply a bit more pressure to it. Sometimes you might need to just insert one edge in order to get it loose. But essentially after it's loose, you can keep using your fingers in order to completely get it out. Like so. Off to the next step. All right, the next step is to get rid of four tiny screws that are holding the plastic body in place. Please be careful when you do that because 
you're working very close to the glass surface and you know you don't want to scratch it if your screwdriver slips so take your time and don't rush in some cases these screws can have tiny drops of glue on them and if that's true just take a q-tip uh, dip it in the lighter fluid and gently rub the q-tip on the uh, drop of glue and it will dissolve and that will allow you to get rid of these screws all right off to the next step okay when you get rid of all four of them just place them safely somewhere like in the landscape or something like that and now the front is ready to come off it should be very easy like this right now your Escarama is a perfect factory infinity setting if you didn't open it up before so try not to um, wobble the front element for now and just keep it in place uh, if you want to keep infinity but if you accidentally turn it that's fine because you still can throw it on the camera get set your taking lens to infinity and then just find your infinity here on the Escarama yourself so there's nothing to be afraid of there okay off to the next step which is assembly but there is also a step in between here if you want to re-lube your Iskarama if it's not turning smoothly there is a separate video for that I'll leave a link to that in the description it's sort of like step one and a half uh, between the disassembly and assembly all right now we're going to start assembling the maxi scope and we're going to start with this element first you need to get rid of these two screws in the bottom in order to that you'll need that uh, hex key that I've mentioned before so just go ahead and unscrew those you can use a screwdriver with the same hex head whatever you have is fine okay the screws are out now we have to take out this washer and you can do that with your fingers now that it's out you are going to see these two bumps inside the body they are supposed to go into these two notches on the plastic body so you just place your Iskarama inside a metal body like that and you lift it up rotating trying to find a place where they would just match and those little bumps will go inside those little notches so now your Iskarama is inside you can grab it by the rear like so if you need to help yourself twist it now we have to screw this washer back into the metal body with your Iskarama already being inside you have to gently place it there and you can use one finger on one side to slightly press the washer to even sort of even out the pressure on both sides and you can use the hex key to insert it into this notch over here and applying the same pressure on both sides we can start screwing it in um, sometimes um, if you cross thread it a little bit or if it's not even inside if it's um, leaning towards one side or another the threads are not gonna go in properly and you might just want to you know unscrew it back and start over because you don't want to cross thread you don't want to apply too much force here uh, you just want to be very gentle with it and if it goes in it should go in very very smoothly like so uh, if you have a lens wrench again that can help you um, but don't apply too much force uh, it should go in very very easily so at this step you want to screw it in uh, almost all the way you don't want to make it too tight because we're still going to align it okay 
Okay, now that we got uh, the body to sit on the Iskurama, that it almost doesn't wobble, we still want a slight wobble. Now we can attach a foot support to it. So you can throw it on the 15 millimeter rails and adjust the alignment. So here you are going to need that other hex key in order to adjust the height of the foot support, obviously. And you're going to need that other smaller hex key to place those screws that we earlier took out back in place. All right, now that you have it on the foot support, you can throw it on your rig. I'm filming with my, so I'll just use this uh, to show you as, um, to illustrate what's going to happen. So, when you throw it on the rails, you can adjust certain parameters about um, how high it is. Obviously, if you loosen this screw, you can adjust the height of the Iskarama. And if you're using a cinema camera, your rig is probably gonna be standardized and the height is going to be the same. Uh, but if you're like using with a custom small rig with like a GH5 or some other camera that is using a cage or something, this height can change. But also, uh, what changes is the angle. Uh, so you want to center the rear of the Iskarama um, regarding your taking lens perfectly. And you can use the height for that or um, this left and right uh, position in order to have it perfectly dead center. Once you do that, just Tighten it up and after that we want to make sure that our oval is perfectly vertical so we want to align the lens. Obviously the old alignment mechanism with the spring and the buttons is out now so to replace it I have these tiny screws here and that's what this tiny hex uh, key is for. So what you can do is loosen these up a bit. There is already a washer up front there, so it's holding everything in place and nothing is going to fall out, don't, don't worry. So loosen them on one and another side. And then having this Iskarama on camera, you can grab it by the rear and rotate it a couple of degrees to make sure you get that perfect alignment. You can use flares, you can use a certain object that you definitely know that is like vertical or horizontal in order to, you know, look into your viewfinder and let's say align the flares so they are perfectly horizontal or align the edge of the frame with like a tall building that you know is perfectly vertical. Uh, but before doing that, make sure that your camera is um, also uh, leveled properly using like the small bubbles on your tripod or something like that. And after you're done with the alignment, you just tighten these screws up. You can apply a little more force here if you would like to because they don't have to move at all later so you just do this alignment once and then later it's going to be perfect on uh, every camera of that you that you can shoot it on as long as the rig is the same rig and everything is aligned all right after you do that you can take the whole thing off the camera again and now it's a good time to tighten that washer all the way up so there is no wobbling going on right now it wobbles because we need to we need a little space uh, for the alignment to happen so we don't didn't want it to be very tight but now we can have it 
tightened all the way. And I'm just inserting again, I'm just inserting the hex key into the into the washer and making sure that I tight make it very very tight. Okay, now I have it tightened all the way and as you can see there is like absolutely no wobble going on. It's very very tight in there. Okay, off to the next step. Okay, the next step is to get your front ring on. So, if you didn't touch your glass, you still have perfect infinity set up here. If you did, throw it on the camera, make sure that this is at infinity, twist it back and forth. Remember, it's usually not all the way to the right, so you can't turn it. That's usually past infinity. Infinity is just a couple of degrees before that. Make sure that you have perfect infinity here. Then get this front ring. Locate your infinity mark. There it is for me. Infinity mark. Make sure that you align it with the focus mark on the body and gently, gently place the front ring on top of your front element and make sure that you rotate it all the way so the stoppers touch at infinity. You can see that I'm getting a hard stop here and my infinity is going to be perfectly aligned with the focus mark. Now, you gotta get all those four little screws back and start screwing them into those tiny holes. Alright, now that we have our screws back in, the only thing that is left is to insert the nameplate. Now that is going to be a little tricky because usually they are either too big or not perfectly round and you have to send them down. On the bottom of the box that you've received there are two sheets of sandpaper which you can use to do just that. I had to sand mine down quite a bit on one side um, the other side was fine, but on this side it was bulging out. The threads were, were bulging out and it was like really, really oval. So I had to send it down. Um, and after you do that, you just want to drop it inside and very gently start screwing it in. And um, this can take a lot of time based on uh, what my other clients told me. Uh, usually it's tricky because it's very easy to cross thread stuff like what is happening right now uh, with me but you want to take your time and spend good 5, 10, maybe even 15 minutes uh, sending it down just a bit test fitting whether it's going to go in or not and um, this is going to be essentially the last step but there is one other um, non-mandatory step which is getting the back on so after I screw my nameplate in we're going to take a look at that all right now that everything is nice and tight here up front we can rotate the Iskarama at this point you want to check if everything is matching, if you have a hard stop at infinity, uh, if you're going to have a hard stop at close focus, it's absolute must that you check this before trying to use your Iskarama. Because if you didn't tighten those screws up properly, uh, this ring can rotate uh, around the front element and eventually you will lose your alignment uh, and you can unscrew the front element it will just simply drop and you can smash it so that's not what you want obviously so make sure that everything works 
properly make sure that those four screws are tightened properly before using it on the camera and now if you're using cine lenses and you need this rear to protrude this much uh, then you can use it like this uh, but if you want to get those 49 millimeter threads back uh, you can simply place the rear piece of housing back on here you can get this retainer ring back and again like with the other washer align it nicely apply even pressure just screw it in it's gonna be like a lot of rotations for you but yeah you want to make it go almost all the way in but not quite and I'm actually doing that in real time with you right now because you don't want it to be super tight so the rear can still rotate so you just make it quite tight so it doesn't feel very loose see this shouldn't be the case this shouldn't happen so if this is the case you should just keep screwing it in Oops. okay yeah now it's pretty firm and you can see that the rear rotates both directions now and you can just place your take a lens on the back here and just start rotating the rear and screw it in okay so this is it uh, we're done this is ready to use um, I recommend that you don't um, lose all the parts that you took off like the old alignment act mechanism and whatnot store it somewhere safe and let me know if you encounter any um, issues while doing this and if you manage to successfully assemble it uh, please shoot me an email with an image or something of your rig um, I'd really really love to see that thank you